Imagine being on a plane, boredom setting in as the clouds roll by. Suddenly, a thought strikes. What if you were to open the emergency exit and plunge towards the ground? Would it certainly be the end? Or would you survive with a few broken bones and a wild tale to tell? To answer this, we need to strip away some variables. Let's disregard Felix Baumgartner, the daredevil who hurled himself from a height of 128,100 feet, equipped with a pressurized suit and parachute. And let's not consider the so-called wreckage riders, those who've survived falls while trapped inside fragments of broken aircraft. Instead, let's focus on a solitary individual, sans any equipment, casing, or forethought. Picture this, you've unlatched the exit door and you're free falling, what happens next? History has shown that a person can survive a fall from at least 20,000 feet. World War II pilot Alan McGee proved this when he was forced to abandon his plane sans a parachute. His survival was likely aided by crashing through a glass roof, which dissipated the impact. According to James Kakalios, a physicist at the University of Minnesota, the manner and location of your landing significantly influence whether you rise from the ground or descend six feet under. The logic is simple. The longer the landing time, the lesser the force needed to halt you. Survivors of high falls have succeeded in extending this time, even if by mere milliseconds. From one millisecond to three, the force required is reduced by three times. Landing on surfaces like glass, snow, or trees, which absorb the impact better than concrete, can be life-saving. Another crucial factor is deceleration. A larger surface area means more energy is required to displace the air in your path, thus slowing you down. Adopting the flying squirrel position, body spread out, is more beneficial than falling head or feet first. Without a parachute, it's best to fall belly down or attempt tumbling. But how high can one fall and still survive? We know that 20,000 feet is survivable. But what about greater heights? The answer is complex and depends on numerous variables, including the amount of clothing fluttering behind you, which can affect your surface profile. In conclusion, surviving a high fall involves a combination of factors, including increasing air drag, landing on absorbent surfaces, and extending the landing time. While the odds may seem slim, history is filled with astonishing tales of survival that challenge our understanding of the human body's resilience.